In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. We come before the Lord asking for forgiveness for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, heard the Lord saying to me, to the angel of the church of Sardis, write this. The one who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars say this. I know your works, that you have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen what is left, which is going to die. For I have found not your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember then how you accepted and heard. Keep it and repent. If you are not watchful, I will come like a thief, and you will never know at what hour I will come upon you. However, you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments. They will walk with me dressed in white because they are worthy. The victor will thus be dressed in white and I will never erase his name from the book of life, but will acknowledge his name in the presence of my father and of his angels. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church of Laodicea, write this, the amen, the faithful and true witness, the source of God's creation says this, I know your works, I know you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich and affluent and have no need of anything. And yet you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich and white garments to put on so that your shameful nakedness may not be exposed and buy ointment to smear on your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I love I reprove and chastise. Be earnest, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, 
Then I will enter his house and dine with him, and he with me. I will give the victor the right to sit with me on my throne, as I myself first won the victory and sit with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The word of the Lord. I will seat the victor beside me on my throne. He who walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue. I will seat the victor beside me on my throne. Who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the retrobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. I will seat the victor beside me on my throne. Who lends not his money at usury, or accepts no bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be disturbed. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jericho is the city of decision. It is that first town when Moses and Aaron had brought the Israelites out of Egypt after 40 years, after, out of the Sinai, through the Sinai, viewing into the promised land that a full generation could not go because of their lack of faith in the desert. So the entire generation is spent in the desert in Jericho, um, after all the scouts have been sent in and they reach the crossing place of the Jordan, is the very first city, walled city, that they encounter right across, right across the Jordan River. And that, of course, comes the story that they take the Ark of the Covenant across the Jordan and they surround the city of Jericho and they, they, they follow the instruction of God and they blast trumpets and the walls of Jericho fall and they take possession of the city. And so... It's in Jericho that the plan of the father, the first city falls, that they're now inhabiting the land that they were promised in the covenant, in the covenant made, made with, with, with Moses in the desert, previously made with Abraham as well. And so God's word is coming to be fulfilled. Kind of conversion point, when you talk about Jericho, there's a huge history of Israel in the covenant that goes along with the city, and, th and therefore it, it takes a certain several miracles of Jesus, the blind man, um, 
the Good Samaritan, they're, they're just outside the city of Jericho itself. A lot of things happening, and it's, it's a place of decision. It's a place of expressing one's faith. And this unlikely man, Zacchaeus, uh, is not seen as one of the righteous. He is a tax collector, chief tax collector, very wealthy man. And so he's kind of seen as one of the guys who, you know, he's, he's not a faithful descendant of Abraham, and yet, yet he's, he's, he's claimed so by Christ today. And why is that? Well, for his many imperfections, Zacchaeus displays that one virtue, that one virtue necessary to begin to receive graces from God, and that's the virtue of humility. He's willing to, to some, look like a fool, and to others, look like a man of faith by trying to race ahead, and there's, there's kind of this co co comedic effect that he's, he's short, and he, he's a man of, of stature in the community as far as his wealth and power go, um, small of stature before, you know, in faith, because he's, he's in many ways a, a very compromised man. And yet, when his moment comes to see Jesus, he makes an act of humility, runs ahead of the crowd, knows that he's got to, what he's got to do in order to see Jesus, climbs this tree. And so you have the chief tax collector of Jericho. Again, actually, it's, Jericho is the old, oldest city in the world that's been constantly inhabited, city in the world. It goes back thousands and thousands of years B.C. And so he climbs this, this sycamore tree, and it's an act of humility. Why? Because he wants to see more of God. And that's our message today. If, if in humility we come before God because we want to see more of him, then God will respond. Um, if we're willing to put aside our pride, put aside our vanity, put aside our ego, even with all the imperfections that we might have, then God will respond and, and allow us to see and know more of him. And, and this is all that makes a difference in the life of Zacchaeus today, is his being able, his expressed desire to see Jesus, and the fact that his particular social standing might be a good reason for Jesus to walk on by. Jesus doesn't. Jesus knows the language of humility, wants to see it, so that he can help those to whom he came to, to help. And that's the reason why the scripture passage ends with, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. And so today, be mindful of the ways in which we kind of help ourselves stay lost at times because of pride, because of an unwillingness to humble ourselves before the Lord, following the impulses of the Holy Spirit, and to find Jesus where Jesus is to be found, and to make ourselves available to that presence of Christ that, that is... Um, absolutely given to us in our lives and most especially and profoundly as we experience, will experience in just a few moments in the Eucharist itself. So let us offer our prayers to the Lord. Gracious God, we pray for our church. We pray for its missionary work of witnessing the gospel in word, deed, action, uh, before the world, uh, that we might be more purified in our desire to seek, know, and to love, and to humbly serve our Lord Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray today, uh, we remember today all servicemen and women, all those who have taken oaths of service to the citizenry of the United States and to our, our leaders. We pray for them and their families uh, today and for their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray for all those who are struggling with their faith or are have, uh, struggling to find God in their lives. We pray for a greater prompting of the Holy Spirit and, and a disposition. They might respond uh, to the movements of the Lord in their lives, drawing them nearer to our God. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all who mourn the loss of a loved one, we pray to the Lord. And for Bob and Rosemary Bird, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious God, through the intercession of all the angels and saints, we ask that you hear the prayers we offer today, and that you grant them through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer to you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer to you. Fruit to the vine, the work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for us. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain for us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness, Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial, the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and to our bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who would like to receive the Eucharist on the hand, we invite to come forward first in our communion line. Um, you can begin by lining up in the main aisle so that others may know. For those who would like to receive on the, hand, on the tongue, we ask you to please wait until those who have received on the hand have received the Eucharist. And as always, uh, thank you for being mindful of your social distancing.
Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you by your grace. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.